Hi, it's Nick with the Run Testers, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2 and the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite. So the Nitro Elite and the Vaporfly 2 are two kind of top tier carbon racing shoes, but you might be wondering why I'm comparing this Puma to it, given that they have announced the new kind of faster shoe, well, the Fast R shoe, I'm going to call it the Faster. Now the Faster is, you know, Puma's new kind of exciting carbon racing shoe, but it's available in very limited quantities around the world, and it's not available in the UK at all for a long time. Whereas the Nitro Elite is currently available in the UK, and it looks like it's finally going to be something that people are able to get hold of. Kind of throughout of last year, it was, it was very difficult to get hold of the Nitro Elite, so I thought it'd be a good time to, to compare the Nitro Elite to what is, you know, a lot of people regard as the best carbon racing shoe out there, which is the Vaporfly 2. It's also worth saying that the Nitro Elite is a lot cheaper than the new Puma shoe, which I think is $250 or €250, Euros, whereas this is £170 or $200 or €200, Euros, so it you know, still comes in a fair bit cheaper and it is still going to be a valid option if it is available alongside the new shoe. Uh, there are also some colorways available for £160, I think, at the moment. I think this colorway is not one of the new releases, so you might be able to pick it up at kind of an even better price. Uh, that obviously makes it a fair bit cheaper than the Vaporfly 2 as well, which is um, £210 or $225 in some colors, or £225 and $240 in kind of most colors. Uh, they both have an 8mm drop. Uh, when it comes to the stack height, Nike doesn't officially give its stack heights generally, but this is kind of pushing towards that 40mm limit, so maybe slightly lower than the Alphafly, whereas the Nitro Elite is 36 millimeters, um, actually looks and feels a lot less than that when you're running in it, but yeah, it hasn't got the maxed out stack of most carbon shoes. Uh, it's slightly lighter than the Vaporfly. It's 201 grams in my UK size nine, which is 7.1 ounces. Whereas the Vaporfly 2 is 206 grams in my size or 7.3 ounces. In terms of the designs of the shoe on the Vaporfly, you've got this kind of, um, you've got this kind of knitted upper material. Gone is the kind of slightly crisp packety vapor weave that was on the original Next Percent, which kind of hugged against the toes. This is kind of raised a little bit more in the front. Uh, there's a trifle more padding on the tongue, but it's still very kind of minimal tongue and there's not really a lot of cushioning around the heel either. The whole kind of upper is designed to be you know, very lightweight, which is what you expect in a racing shoe. In the midsole, you've got Nike's Piba Zumex foam. You know, fantastic foam. Everyone knows about it by now. Very light, very bouncy, very impressive. Got a full Zumex midsole with a full length carbon plate sandwiched in it um, with a kind of slight scooped shape at the front. And then the outside, you've got a nice, covering of rubber on the forefoot and then kind of two strips at the back here. There is some exposed foam. You see as a heel striker, I've chewed a little bit up on the back of this shoe, um, but in general, durability hasn't been a major concern with the kind of Nike outsoles when I'm just using them on the road and the track. The Puma has a mono mesh upper. It's kind of a very lightweight material. It's not kind of as open as the knit, as the knit you get on the Nike, but it still breathes very well. And yeah, it's very lightweight and they've kind of got very minimal kind of padding around the heel here and kind of nothing at all on the tongue again all about keeping the weight down here with the uppers. Now in the midsole, you have a nitrogen infused Piba material, which is kind of different to the rest of the shoes in Puma's Nitro range. This is kind of lighter, softer, bouncier, just it's their top foam, so it's just gone in their kind of top racing shoes. It's also in the kind of new faster shoe as well. You have what Puma calls this inner plate, which is a full length carbon plate, but it kind of forks at the front. Now the outsole, uh, you've got Puma Grip LT, which is kind of a lightweight stripped back version of the Puma Grip that you see across the rest of the Nitro range, which is you know a really fantastic foam that grips well, lasts really well. The lighter version of it still does all of that. It's really, you know, given the amount of covering you'll get here on the heel and the forefoot, it's really impressive that the shoe is so lightweight because this is a good foam that's gripped well for me on kind of sharp turns and stuff like that when you're on uh, even in quite wet conditions. Again, sticking to the road though, you don't really want to take this shoe onto trails. There's a little bit of exposed foam and it's, you know, it's just not built for that. When it comes to the fit, uh, both of these shoes were true to size for me. Actually, they've both got really nice fit. I will say that, like uh, there's a nice amount of room in the toe box, enough that I feel comfortable taking them for long runs with plenty of room, but you know, they're still a really good tight lockdown fit. The only really concerns you have with both shoes actually is comes at the heel. You see I've actually heel locked the Vaporfly 2 just because I did have some heel rub in it early on. Uh, with the kind of new heel design on the Vaporfly 2. I never had that problem in older versions, but heel locking it, being a bit careful about my lacing, I haven't really had any significant problems since. And actually, the Nitro Elite was one of the better shoes in Puma's range for me in terms of heel rub. With the Liberate Nitro and the DV8 Nitro normal version, I did get you know heel rub if I went kind of above an hour, that kind of thing in the shoe, but 
I've had very few problems at all with the actual Elite version. I think it has a slightly tighter, more lockdown fit overall, which is probably what has hopefully helped to remedy those issues. So uh, the Vaporfly 2 is obviously a fantastic running shoe. Uh, um, it's a shoe I've loved using throughout the various generations, going right back to the kind of original 4%. And with the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, this shoe, I have my current 5K and half marathon PBs in it, kind of 15.40 and 70.25 set last year. You know, there's really no race it's not good for. Like, it's really light, it's really fast and punchy. It's great for marathons, it's great for 5K, it's great on kind of short, sharp intervals as well. There's really nothing it can't do when it comes to fast running. While I personally, within Nike's range, do prefer the Alpha Fly for kind of longer events, and I just really enjoy the ride I get from it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very close thing, and the Vaporfly is still a fantastic shoe for racing at any distance. It's very little to fault it, really. You know, it's the kind of shoe, it's, I think it's quite comfortable, and I don't have any significant stability problems with it myself, so I'm happy to use it for a fair bit of training. But, you know, it's probably a shoe you are going to say if you can race day, just because you know, it's, a, it's not the most durable shoe in the world. Um, and at the same time, you, you know, it can be a bit unstable. So it's one that's really best kept for your fast running and it does an amazing job of that. Naturally, it's probably new to more people than the Vaporfly, um, but it's also a really impressive shoe. Like I took it for a lot of running uh, when I first got it in for the main review we have on the channel. Um, it, it arrived during a very, very intense period of marathon training for me. And I took it straight out of the box for a really hard 27 kind of K session with kind of two hard 5Ks in that and then a load of kind of minute reps on and off. And I had a long run the next day, another shoe, and then I went straight into a 5K race in this shoe on the Monday. Um, you know, all that kind of training my legs, still found it really fast. I ran a sub-16 that day, um, and then the next day I took it to the track. Uh, you know, there's a lot of training going on, I tell you. Um, and I did kind of 10 1K reps at 3.15. And what really I took away from all of that was, obviously it's really fast. Um, I really enjoyed racing in it, um, but it also protects the legs a lot more than I kind of thought it would when I was kind of running in it and feeling the ride, because it is a slightly lower firmer shoe than the Vaporfly, um, but it still has got those great foams in there and the plate and you're getting a really nice, efficient and you know protective ride. It's a shoe you can use for lots and lots of running and those kind of longer training sessions um, and longer events. You know, I think I did, I did a half marathon in training with it and ran kind of around 115 pace um, and it was great for that as well. Like I still felt my other legs were being protected well during you know what was a very intense training period for me with lots of mileage and lots of kind of fast miles as well. Say it's got a fairly natural ride for a super shoe. It obviously sounds a bit crazy, but yeah, it doesn't have exaggerated bounce. It doesn't have exaggerated squish and response. There's not a huge kind of aggressive rocker here. It runs you know quite normally, just um, but does all the kind of stuff you want a super shoe to do, which is to kind of make that a little bit more efficient and to kind of protect the legs with those kind of soft and light foams. This is these kind of new lower stack super shoes coming out like the Takumi Sen or even the Street Flyer, which designed for shorter races to help you corner but this is great for that like i will say on the 5k race i did i was taking tight corners in the park and it does a really good job of that um you know it grips really well with that puma grip outsole and it's, it is slightly lower stack and feels even lower than the stack is listed at so you can take corners very aggressively in it for me it does actually almost have a little bit of the feel of the kind of original vaporfly four percent which was slightly lower stack than things like the next percent or even the new takumi sen although yeah, there's a slight difference in feel there. The Skimmy I think is a bit more kind of energetic and kind of firm, whereas this, you know, does have a bit of cush there. Whether it'd be enough to go to the marathon, like I'm very happy to go to a marathon in the Vaporfly, even if I do use the Alphafly mostly these days. I have, you know, run a couple of, run three, three marathons in the Vaporfly, I think, overall. But this probably is a bit firmer. I might be a bit hesitant, but I do think it's going to be a great marathon racing shoe for lots of people, uh, especially, you know, kind of lightweight ones. And I certainly wouldn't be unhappy if tomorrow I had a marathon, this was the only shoe I had available to me and those kind of shorter races, it certainly has a fantastic ride for, very punchy, very fast. And, you know, you do feel in kind of control of the shoe, whereas sometimes the paper fly can take a little bit of control away from you. In a way, that's very helpful for racing, but yeah, it doesn't feel quite so natural. So the easy and kind of safe verdict is always to say that the Nike Vaporfly 2 is the best shoe to go for. Like, there's so many runners out there who love using it. It's a proven commodity. Everyone loves racing in it. I love racing in it. And, you know, kind of, gun to my head tomorrow I had a race of any distance and I just had these two shoes available money's no option I'd be going with the Vaporfly for any of them really but that's not that's not cat out the Puma just yet because in the real world there are things like price to consider and it's a lot cheaper you know it's coming in either 40 or 55 pounds cheaper on the Vaporfly depending on what you manage to get this at for its RRP and it really isn't far off the kind of performance of the Nike especially on those shorter events kind of 5k 10k uh, even half marathon, I'd say, probably. And it just has, you know, a slightly different ride that some people might prefer. Like I say, it is a bit more natural, a bit more stable, slightly firmer. 
um, and a little bit closer to the ground, or, you know, which is always nice, a bit more ground contact. And if you're someone who's been in racing flats, who's never really bought into the high stack, high price super shoes, this is quite a nice middle ground, I would say that for sure. I also think it probably can take a bit more of a beating than the Vaporfly, just because the outsole, I think, will be really good. Um, I've done kind of well over 100K in the shoe, and I haven't really made a dent in it in terms of the feel or the kind of wear on the shoe all around. I think the Vaporfly is a little bit underrated in terms of its durability. I have kind of old versions that have happily gone over 500K, still running really well. Uh, you know, they are using mostly for training, but they could still be very good racing shoes. But yeah, I do think that Puma, Puma might have a slight edge there when it comes to durability. So yeah, all in all, if you've got the Vaporfly, you're probably not gonna dash out and get the uh, Deviate Nitro Elite, uh, but if you are someone who's kind of getting into super shoes now with these kind of lower stack versions starting to crop up, like the Takumi Sen, things like that, this is a great option. Fingers crossed it is still available near you and you can find it, but it's worth a try, especially if you lean to those kind of short events or do want a slightly more kind of natural, low feeling in your racing shoe. I suppose the one other thing I'd say about the Nitro Elite that will be in its favor is that at its price, you know, it's coming in actually around the price of a lot of kind of plated training shoes. If you get it, especially for 160, even 170 is not that much more than something like the, you know, the Endorphin Speed 2. It's, you know, there's a lot of kind of fast training shoes around that price. And I think this is one of the carbon plate shoes I'll be really happy to do a lot of training in because it is a bit lower, a bit more stable. And you're getting that, you know, high level of performance without worrying about beating it up too much. So it could actually work if you're someone who likes to, you know, train in carbon shoes. It could work as a companion to the uh, Vaporfly as a kind of training partner, which sounds a bit crazy, but that's the kind of crazy world of shoes we live in these days. I certainly enjoy doing a lot of training in it in a short space of time myself. That's it guys, that's our comparison of the DVA Nitro Elite and the Vaporfly 2. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, I'm aware that I've said Puma for this entire review. That's, that's how we say it in the UK, we don't say Puma. Uh, I probably should have said this at the start, but yeah, there it is. It's, it's a Puma shoe to me and it always will be. Uh, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and yeah, we'll see you next time.